I was going to start by saying how nice it was to be described by the president as young. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a drummer. Um, I play drums. And after, I've noticed recently, after every gig, the next day, my muscles ache. Okay. Uh, and I go to bed early because my kids wake me up at 7 a.m. I mean, I am old. <laughs> and I came to librarianship late. I was 26 when I first started, and I'm 33 now. And so many of my peers, by the time they're 26, by the time I started, they've, always, they've done these incredible things. And that's partly what this talk is about. It's about that feeling that everybody else seems to be doing amazing things, and how can you keep up? So the, the, this talk is about branding yourself as new professionals and do you need to market yourself to get the job that you want. But before I get on to that, I wanted to mention something that came up uh, about the idea of branding the profession, our image as librarians to the rest of the world. Um, and there's two things I have to say about that. The first thing is you need to give a good account of yourself and your profession every single time you can. Okay? There's no such thing as abstaining from advocacy for librarianship. You're either doing it or you're doing it wrong, okay? So let's say uh, a businessman comes up to me and says, what do you do? And I say, I'm a librarian. And they say, oh, right, so you just shush and stamp books all day, right? <laughs> now, it's really easy for me to say, oh, something like that, okay? But that, I can't do that. What I have to do is I have to give a good account of myself. I have to say, no, actually, I help find people information, I help train people on new tools and technology, I make people better at what they do, I save them time, I help them earn more money, I'm at the cutting edge of technology, I'm in higher education, and in fact, Mr. Businessman, I get to go to amazing places like Cape Town and talk to people like you. <laughs> and I think my job probably kicks your job's ass. okay? You need to tell people that you're doing fantastic stuff, okay? Now the second thing is, um, a lot of this discussion in this conference I've really enjoyed has been about being active as opposed to being passive. Um, so when you're talking about branding yourself as a librarian, um, I think that the key is to be so useful that people have to see you on your terms and not theirs. So don't waste any energy worrying about what the wider world thinks about librarians, but use that energy to change what the wider world thinks about librarians. Okay? Go out there and make people think of us in the way that we want to be thought of. Right, now let's get on with the talk. Can I have the slide? Okay. So, um, is there anybody, can I have a show of hands for people who've entered the profession within the last uh, five to ten years or, or under five years? Okay, so we've got a few people. So the advice here is, is aimed at the new professionals, but actually the title is true about everybody, okay? You all already have a brand, whether you like it or not, okay? And you can influence it if you want to. So there are three things you need to know about brand. You've already got one. You can never fully control it. Okay, so you've got a brand. McDonald's has got a brand. Uh, Apple have got a brand. Coca-Cola have got a brand. No one's fully in control of their brand. But the key message is, don't panic, okay? It's all going to be okay. Now, there's a distinction to be made between branding and brand. And I'm talking about your brand. And I'm not talking about your branding, which is things like colors and logos and, uh, you know, like the, the Liaza branding, um, like that. I'm, I'm talking about your brand, which is essentially your reputation. Um, it's the sum total of everyone's perceptions of what you do. So put it another way, um, your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room, okay? <laughs> so you don't need to necessarily worry about that, but if you are worrying about it, then there's things that you can do to help control it. So... The brand exists in the way people feel about something, and branding exists to make those feelings positive. So you're, you're already emitting signals about yourself. Even if you're massively anti-brand, and you hate the idea of marketing yourself, that's part of your brand, whether you like it or not. If you're a, if you're a speaker, that's part of your brand. If you're an organizer, that's part of your brand. So you can try and make those feelings positive to try and get the job that you want um, and progress in this, in this wonderful career that we have in librarianship in the way that you'd like to. So you are here. Um, where do you want to be? And more importantly, what are the values of the people who are already there? And the reason I bring this up is sometimes people feel an enormous pressure that they have to be superstar librarians doing everything. So they see people giving talks or publishing articles or having you know, amazing online presences, and they think, how do they get time to do all this? I need to do all this stuff as well, and I can't. And, and the answer is you don't have to do everything. All you have to do is appeal 
to the people who are in the positions to appoint you in the job that you really want to do. And it might be that they value getting a paper published in an academic journal, but it might not. You need to know what it is that they value so that you can pursue those goals. Um, be true to yourself and what you're passionate about and then find the kind of job that matches that. Okay? So every path through this profession is different. Every brand is different. But the key thing is to match your brand to the path that you want. Rather than saying, right, I feel under pressure to do lots and lots of talking on stages, and then you end up with a job that relates to that. It's more important to, um, to, to be your apple tree, to, to return to what the mm -hmm. keynote speaker was saying yesterday. Think about what you care about. What can you bring the most passion to? And then find the job that matches that, and then build your brand around working towards that job. And it's also it's about the benefits of what you're doing rather than features of what you're doing. So let's say that you volunteer for a committee and you're the treasurer. The fact that you've volunteered for a committee is it's quite good. Um, that's, a, that's a great thing. But what's really useful to a potential employer is that you know how to deal with money. Um, it's about finding things to do that help you on the path that you want to go on. Don't worry too much about what other people are doing. Um, it's not a massive competition because we don't all want the same things. So do what you want to do and find your people. That's the other thing. Um, the most successful people in our profession are the ones that don't compromise. They do what they want to do. And there are so many of us. And the great thing about the, the internet revolution is that you can find the people that are like you online. So if you find a set of people and they don't like what you're doing, screw them, okay? <laughs> There's enough people that will like what you're doing. So go and find those people that match up with what you care about, okay? Don't compromise. I wish I'd compromised less when I was first getting into the profession. I really like swearing, and I can't start swearing now because I haven't sworn so far, and everyone will think I've suddenly gone mad. <laughs> so a couple of things about building your brand, marketing yourself, um, building your reputation as a librarian. Be open. Be a resource rather than superstar. It's all very well getting up on the stage and saying, look at what I've done, isn't it amazing? But it's better to say, look at what I've done, and this is how I got there, this is how I did it, these are the tools I used. Um, you want to tell people how to achieve stuff, so be open, don't guard what you have, but give of yourself, and share with the community, because that's a great thing, and it works. There's, there's this feeling that, you know, if I write about this new thing that I've done on a blog, then no one will want to speak to me about it because I've already written it down. But it's, that's not true. The opposite is true. More people will want you to come and talk at conferences if you're putting your information out there. Give of yourself for free as much as you can. Now, people often think that branding yourself is all about self-promotion, but it's really not. It's about being part of a dialogue. Just by being here at this conference, you're doing this. You're, you're interested in the future of libraries and the future of the profession. And that's a really important thing. And even if you don't have strong views now, they'll come. Don't feel like you have to know about everything straight away. You can build it up over time. So you build your brand by not just giving advice, but by taking advice, by listening to other people as well as talking to other people, by sharing the content that you think people will find useful, even if it's not your own content. Bring everything in and, and be part of a conversation about librarianship and you'll start to build your brand. And there's a brilliant quote here from a librarian blogger in America. She says, it's a mistake to think of personal branding as an end in itself. A successful personal brand is a byproduct of the successful pursuit of one's own interest, contribution and networking in librarianship. So in other words, if you do what you care about and you do what you feel passionately about, in as open and public and networked a way as possible, then you'll get a great brand out of that. You don't need to have to you know, think, oh God, what do I do to build my brand? You can just do what you feel passionate about and the, band, the brand will be a byproduct of what you're doing. Okay, so let's say that you've, you're with me so far. Mm -hmm. You admit that you have a brand, whether you want one or not. You've worked out that there is a, a path to the goals that you ultimately want to achieve in librarianship. And you've worked out, right, I need, to, I need to build this brand to suit this path. So you want to influence it, what do you do? I would suggest five potential options. The first one is get online, okay? Now, um, you can go to a site like blogger.com or wordpress.com and with no knowledge of websites or the internet or anything at all, within 
half an hour, you could have a free website of your very own that you can put on a card and tell people about and have people come and visit it. You can start a blog with no money or expertise, and that's the wonderful thing about the age that we live in, is that there's so many opportunities that there weren't five, ten years ago. So get online and write about what you feel passionate about. Or go to twitter.com and sign up for Twitter. Um, some people, myself included, take a long time to realise that Twitter is really useful, but I promise you it's the number one most useful tool for me in my job. I use it like a human Google. I ask librarians questions on it all the time, and I use it to get opportunities. I mean, were, were it not for Twitter and blogging, I wouldn't be here today. Mm. I don't mean I'd be dead, I just mean I wouldn't be here <laughs> in Cape Town today. They're not life-saving, but they are very good. Um, the second thing is publish something. Um, there are calls for papers, for, for book chapters, for journal articles. There are, you know, preferably write for, for an open access publication so that you're part of the solution rather than part of the problem. Um, and, and, and get your views out there. And, but that's not to say that blogging is not a legitimate form of, of getting your views out there. I'm a big advocate of blogging. And if, if you really want people to hear what you're saying, it's better to write it online than it is in an academic journal because academic journals aren't read by as many people as blogs. So, to, for example, I wrote a book about marketing libraries and in its first year, it did about twice as well as they expected it to do, which meant it sold 1,000 copies. But my blog has 2,000 subscribers, so more people read my blog than read my book. So if you've really got something to say, find a way that your biggest audience will say it. That said, there are still a lot of areas of the profession that would really value publishing an academic paper. And if, this is what I mean about matching your brand to the path. If you're on that path, then think about trying to get published. And if you're not, don't worry, don't feel the pressure like you have to. Now, the third thing is organize something. Um, get involved in an event like this. Uh, be a helper, be a volunteer. Um, if you can't find a conference that does what you want, start your own conference. You know, put your entrepreneur's hat on and go into, <laughs> into, the, into the town and try and get businesses to support what you're doing. Um, the president mentioned that some people were waiting to join the AZA um, until it was accredited. Don't wait to join the AZA. Join now. I promise you, being part of a professional body is worth it because you're part of something bigger. You're not just having a dialogue with the people across the office from you. You're talking to the whole of librarianship as, as a whole. And what did you say... I'm not doing a sales job here. What did you say the rate was for renewing uh, the... 450. Okay, so it's 450 rand. Um, in the UK, it's... 415 rand, sorry. In the UK, it's more, more like 3,000 rand. But the thing is, so it's already good value, but, but you only have to get one better job or pay increase as a result of the opportunities that the ASA gives you to pay that back a, a hundred times. Because what being part of a professional body gives you is the opportunity to do things that your job doesn't yet give you the opportunity to do because you're not senior enough. Like writing papers, talking in presentations, organising events like this. Okay. Now, the fourth thing is share something. If you've come up with something that you know is useful to the community, whether it's a new way of teaching information literacy or a great way to use technology to enhance conferences like this or a way to get more people into public libraries or whatever it might be, don't guard it, share it. Let other people learn how to do the same thing and they'll thank you and they'll credit you. They won't steal the idea, they'll credit you and bring more people back to your original idea. Sharing something is great. And then the last thing is presenting something there are all, there's calls for papers for this conference. There are calls for papers for conferences all over the world. And as I say, if you can't find the kind of conference for the kind of paper that you want, then you know, maybe make your own event and present at that. But it's a really good way to have all of these, way, all of these methods here are about getting your ideas out there into the profession so that people can hear you and engage you in dialogue. Basically, what I'm saying is just do something. Do, do anything. Because... There are so many nice people out there. There's so many free tools out there. Whatever you want to do, you can make it happen now in a way that you couldn't, even in the year 2000, 2005, even 2010. There are so many tools out there that can make whatever idea you have a reality. So don't wait for somebody else to do it. Take the initiative. Do stuff yourself, and it will be fantastically rewarding, I promise. Now, if... You are a new professional. I've collated some advice from loads of people who, who are new professionals themselves or are more senior professionals. And it's at that address at the top of the screen, thewikiman.org slash advice. Um, there is a bigger version of this presentation with more detail than the time allowed at bit.ly slash mpdbrand. So have a look at that if you want more stuff on the topics that we've been talking about today. And the final thing I'd like to say is 
two things. Thank you for inviting me to your wonderful country. It's absolutely amazing. I don't want to go to a UK conference again because they're massively boring compared to this one. <laughs> don't, don't tweet that. Uh, and the second thing... <laughs> The second thing is, is good luck and follow your passion and enjoy yourself because it's a wonderful profession to be in. Thank you Thank very much. You.